Welcome to Selling Travel TV and our latest webcast, a how to sell session on Australia's New South Wales. I'm joined by the perfect person to explain this, Destination New South Wales' regional manager for UK and Europe, Siobhan Shaw. Hi Siobhan. Hi Laura, how are you well, doing? Good day, should I say. <laughs> yeah, good day, just works just as well. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you doing? Yeah, good. Yeah, um, we've kind of got into a bit of a rhythm now, I suppose, working from home, as many people are. So, um, yeah, it's having to sort of adapt a little bit and uh, work on the few things that we can continue to work on whilst we're not sort of in the throes of really pushing um, Sydney and New South Wales, obviously, in terms of packages to the consumer. So that's why we're really glad to have uh, opportunities like today where we can keep uh, talking to the trade because we know Obviously, people are still keen to um, do training on destinations and hopefully just keep up their destination knowledge um, in the interim before we can really get back to the, the good stuff of selling, selling holidays. So hopefully it won't be too long before then. Indeed, indeed. OK. And, um, and, and you're, you're actually um, you've start, just started a webinar series, haven't you, um, this week? So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so we've just launched um, the UK and Europe webinar series. So it's four webinars over four weeks. Uh, so the first one was um, Tuesday, the 16th of June. So the next one will be next Tuesday, the 23rd. And each one we're basically aiming to bring um, three New South Wales products um, directly to agents so they can hear directly from those products in New South Wales. Um, so it's been really good to obviously have those products actually speaking to um, the agents directly. And then I, myself and one of my colleagues are on hand to kind of answer questions as well throughout the session. So, yeah, we hope it kind of brings a little bit of Sydney and New South Wales into, into people's home offices. Um, whilst we can't all go and visit ourselves and we um, unfortunately couldn't bring some of our suppliers over earlier this year. So we're hoping that this is a good way to still bring some of their, um, their key product messages um, over to UK agents. Yeah, definitely. Well, I was very much looking forward to... Um, to the roadshow but unfortunately like many things it was cancelled wasn't it so this is the next best thing so um yeah urge all our um readers or watchers to um, to tune into that but um for now um i thought we would do um a quick sort of general recap i guess because the, the webinars go into quite specific products and specific areas of new south wales um but i thought we would do a sort of general how to sell um so i'll start with the the first question which we, which we always ask in our in our how to sell features in selling travel magazine um and that is why sell new south wales which sounds like a bit of a strange question i mean why not obviously um we all love new south wales but um how can how can agents persuade their their clients to sort of venture um this far really i guess for their first post lockdown holiday yeah, well, um, as you say, it's almost like a why not question. Just look at the background behind me. I think Sydney is obviously one of those really spectacular destinations um, and uh, obviously the one of the most popular gateways into Australia. So I think even people who are considering a broader Australia trip will hopefully be considering Sydney as part of that. Um, and I think that one of the best things and one of the key things that we that we tell people about New South Wales is really the diversity of experiences that you can have within New South Wales. Um, so people are looking for, you know, different types of Australian experiences uh, on their holiday to Australia. Um, they can get really a lot of them within New South Wales and also quite close to Sydney. So it's a, a very close proximity. So within 90 minutes, you can be in the Blue Mountains, so in World Heritage listed uh, national park. So great for that kind of Australian nature and wildlife experience where you can do bushwalking and things like that. You've also got the Hunter Valley, which is about a two hour drive away or a train ride away um, where you can sample some of Australia's best wines. Um, that's Australia's oldest wine growing region. So there's a great wine uh, producing heritage there. Um, and then of course, you've got lots of other coastal destinations nearby, um, whether you choose to go down the south coast um, of New South Wales down towards Melbourne or perhaps drive north and then you'll hit destinations like Byron Bay before you hit our neighbors in uh, uh, Queensland. So there's, there's really a lot of different types of experiences that people can have. And then obviously alongside that, there's the amazing iconic experiences that you can have in Sydney. So visiting the Sydney Opera House, perhaps doing a tour of the building, climbing um, Sydney Harbour Bridge to a bridge climb, or just going and heading out to um, iconic beach spots like Bondi Beach as well, um, where you can either learn to surf or just uh, enjoy the, the sun, sea and sand over there. 
Okay, so I guess what you're saying is it's um, you could treat it almost as a sort of microcosm of, of the whole of Australia. It's, it's got ev all those Australian experiences in there. Yeah, definitely. And I think even something that might be more surprising to people about New South Wales is you can also have fantastic Aboriginal Australian experiences in New South Wales as well. It's not exclusive to any one part of Australia, but there's also great Aboriginal heritage tours that you can do right from Circular Quay in Sydney Harbour. Um, or there's um, other sort of more immersive tours that you can get, such as one called um, Naran Naran um, Aboriginal Tours down on the New South Wales South Coast. So there's a lot of like kind of quite rich and different cultural experiences that you can have within New South Wales um, as well. So, yeah, you can really find a lot of those sort of quintessential Aussie experiences uh, in, in one area. OK, so next question would be um, who to sell it to. So. Um, I guess, again, you could say everyone, it suits everyone, but um, this is where we sort of go into um, what there is to suit for, for different groups of people. So um, families or couples, um, nature lovers or, or culture lovers, which you just touched on. Yeah, so the largest groups of people that we tend to see coming to New South Wales are sort of couples over 50. And this is obviously from, from the UK. Um, so yeah, couples over 50 and also the younger sort of gap year traveller, they're the sort of largest groups that we get travelling to New South Wales. But then I think in terms of interest, um, as you say, there's a lot that would appeal to multiple different types of traveller. Um, but certainly for nature and wildlife lovers, there's some fantastic offerings. Um, aside from places like the Blue Mountains, there's, um, there's over 870 national parks within New South Wales. So really a lot of choice for people that want to get out into nature. Um, there's also Lord Howe Island, which is a World Heritage listed island, just about a two hour flight of, uh, off the coast of New South Wales, um, which has got some completely endemic species that you can't find anywhere else in the world. So that sort of nature experience can, is, definitely, um, is definitely there. Um, the food and wine aficionados, uh, obviously Sydney is a world class city, so fantastic food and drink offerings there. Um, I mean, one of the best seats at the, ha uh, at the table is obviously by the water in Sydney. They're, pretty um, abundant, those sort of waterside restaurants. So there's some really sort of upmarket options like Key, which is a restaurant that overlooks the Sydney Opera House. So you get those pretty uh, amazing sort of picture postcard views whilst also indulging in some pretty amazing food and drink as well. Um, for families, absolutely, Sydney, again, is a great family destination. Um, I mean, people, uh, children um, from the age of eight can do bridge time. So even something like that is suitable for sort of, you know, younger to kind of um, teenage children. Uh, there's also lots of animal encounters like at Taronga Zoo where you can get up close and personal with some of the Aussie wildlife um, and areas like Darling Harbour which have a lot of um, family friendly attractions. Um, so there's, there's really a lot to offer and I suppose one of the markets that we're sort of thinking about um, coming back to, to traveling immediately sort of post lockdown is going to be that VFR traveller. Obviously there's that amazing connection between the UK and Australia which really makes it um, you know, such an appealing destination from both sides of the world and um, we hope that there'll be lots of people you know Brits um, in the UK that might want to go and visit friends and family in Australia uh, once sort of travel restrictions are lifted and perhaps this represents a really good sort of opportunity for agents to upsell some of those different destinations or different products that perhaps they haven't considered before just to try and add to that person's experience because we know lots of people when they're visiting friends and family um, they're still looking for a holiday so it's not just that they're just going to go and stay with their relatives for two or three weeks. I'm sure their relatives will probably boot them out after that time. So, uh, you know, it's like where else can you go and what other experiences can you have um, whilst you're there to kind of really make the most of your, your trip over to Australia? Yeah, definitely. I, I can see that. Yeah, I guess. Um, yeah, there are, I mean, I know um, several of my friends who've got who've got relatives in Australia, so that must be a big selling point. But um, And you, talk, you talked about... Um, yeah, wine lover, wine and food and wine lovers and, and, and nature lovers. Um, the the nature loving side of it, I guess I hadn't hadn't really thought of so much. Did, could you just expand on that? How many national parks did you say there were? Yeah, so we have over eight hundred and seventy. So they're and they're all over um, New South Wales. Um, you've actually got Australia's oldest national park, which is just about an hour south of Sydney. It's called um, Royal National Park. And if you go on the Grand Pacific Drive, which is quite a popular driving route. Um, as you make your way down towards Melbourne. Um, that's a really scenic coastal drive and it actually goes through the national park itself. So you can even experience that park 
just by you know on a self-drive you wouldn't even necessarily have to get out if you don't want to but you can obviously get out and then do some bush walking in the area or even um during the whale watching season it's a good uh, place to sort of camp out and see if you can spot the humpback whales migrating up the coastline um, so that's a pretty special place. Uh, there's also um, Dorigo National Park, which is um, close to Coffs Harbour, which is uh, on the north coast of New South Wales. That's actually um, part of the Gondwana rainforest of Australia. So again, sort of a totally different landscape. You've got the rainforest there. Um, again, a great place for sort of hiking, um, camping, enjoying the outdoors. Um, we've also got uh, Australia's first dark sky park, which is called the Warren Bungles National Park, which is more in the central areas of New South Wales. So really quite a remote area, which we know these sorts of things are also going to appeal to people sort of post lockdown. Or so we believe anyway, these sort of big, vast open spaces. And that's an amazing spot for stargazing and um, yeah, enjoying those big open night skies. So that would be a, a, definitely a top tip for any keen astronomers out there. Yeah, definitely. The open spaces and getting away from the crowds, I think, will, will be popular, won't it? So that takes us on to the next question, which is um, specifically what to sell. So um, not only specific attractions, like I mean, you've already touched on, on a few iconic ones, um, like the Sydney Harbour Bridge and, and Taronga Zoo, but, but also um, specific destinations and um, the kind of key destinations as well as some, some more niche ones. Yeah, so uh, as I say, I sort of touched on some of the key Sydney um, attractions. So I suppose sort of looking beyond there, um, I mean, the Hunter Valley, there is over 150 wineries there, but there's a couple that um, offer um, things that agents can sell. There's um, places like Brokenwood Wines, which has a fantastic new cellar door. And there's also some great uh, sort of touring options that will take people um, around the Hunter, taking the different wines and things like that. Um, but there are lots of other wine regions in New South Wales. Uh, down on the south coast, um, there's a place called uh, Cupid's Estate, which is um, a lovely little family-owned winery, which uh, is also um, very environmentally friendly and sustainable. So they've got some fantastic things that they offer there. They've also got their own brewery, dairy. Um, gosh, I can't even remember. They sort of seem to grow and make everything down there. So um, lots of great experiences like that. Um, other things that um, you can sell, obviously, that are perhaps other, other sort of iconic Australian experiences like learning to surf, for instance. Um, so there's an operator called Let's Go Surfing that runs tours down on Bondi Beach or, or lessons on Bondi Beach, but also in Byron Bay. So that's perhaps something that people want that sort of uh, Aussie lifestyle experience, then um, that's something to think about for Byron Bay and, and uh, as well as Sydney. Um, yeah, gosh, there's just so many things to choose from. It's hard to think of what else to sort of pinpoint really but I suppose some of the lesser known uh, regions perhaps um, would be places like the Southern Highlands uh, which is about a 90 minute drive from Sydney and if there's any kind of keen cricket fans out there there's um, the Donald Bradman Museum which is down in the Southern Highlands um, which might be something that people want to tag on if someone's considering visiting something like the Ashes which is already uh, you know 18 months away but probably will come around very quickly um, for those of us by the time we're sort of you know really thinking about travel and things like that again so um, yeah, there's there's a real sort of diversity of things to, to sell. And I suppose one other thing which I, it sort of touches back on your earlier question about nature and wildlife, there's really a lot of um, wildlife experiences that are on offer to be sold as well. So the whale watching season that I mentioned runs through from May to November. Um, so you can do whale and dolphin watching tours from places like Jervis Bay on the south coast, um, Port Macquarie on the north coast, and even from Sydney as well. Um, so lots of whale watching tours, but then year round you could um, do dolphin watching tours from places like Port Stephens with someone like Moonshadow Cruises. So um, lots of wildlife touring options available as well. Okay, you touched on the, the iconic um, Aussie lifestyle, which is I think, um, yeah, it's a, it's a huge selling point for, for New South Wales and Australia in general. But one of the things I think of when I think of um, the Aussie lifestyle is the beach. Um, could you take us through some of the best beaches in, in New South Wales? Oh, God, it's so hard to choose uh, the best ones. I mean, <laughs> there's so many. Um, but I think probably one of the things to say is that, um, you know, places like Bondi and Manly, obviously like fantastic, iconic beaches in Sydney, but there's hundreds of others, um, you know, even uh, sort of just within Sydney and the surrounding area itself. Um, that you can choose from if you're looking for something that's perhaps a little bit less crowded or you know just a bit of a way away from the main tourist trail um, you've got Palm Beach slightly more in the north which is where um, uh, one of the famous Aussie soaps was filmed so um, 
not neighbours, home and away. <laughs> but um, so you can go and get your, your fix of soap operas up there. Um, I think the area around the Tweed, which is just slightly north of Byron Bay, actually has some of the most amazing beaches. Um, so again, but Byron Bay is sort of the popular choice, but there's perhaps some really nice lesser known beaches in the Tweed area, sort of near the main town of, um, of Kingscliff and uh, Carboretum Beach. Um, there's a great new hotel up there. It's a couple of years old now, Halcyon House, which is um, a popular spot with celebrities apparently. So um, that's a really nice area. And all along the, the Shoalhaven region in the South Coast, they, um, uh, they actually recently had a 100, 100 beach challenge where they were trying to get people to kind of visit some of their um, amazing white sandy beaches down there around the region, sort of around Jervis Bay. Um, so there's, there's, there's a, lot of, a lot of options and a lot of choice. So it's hard to sort of pinpoint, pinpoint specific beaches. <laughs> one Great. that I would uh, uh, recommend as a bit of a tip to, as a place to see kangaroos actually at sunrise. Um, is a, a beach called Emerald Beach, which is near Coffs Harbour. Um, and I was lucky enough to just be up there a few years ago. And um, if you go when the sun's rising or even when the sun's setting as well, there's lots of kangaroos kind of popping around on the headland and also down on the beach. And I, at the same time, also saw loads of surfers in the water and dolphins sort of frolicking around. So it was wow. a bit of a pinch moment, really. <laughs> like you could not get more Aussie than that, could you? <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> okay. So. I mean, all these experiences sound incredible and there's so many places to see. Um, I guess the, well, the next question is, 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 is how to sell it. And, um, and by that, I mean, I mean, it's hard to get around, isn't it? It's quite a big area, um, you know, one state as a, compared to one county in, in the UK is, is very different. So how should um, agents sell it? I mean, there's obviously multiple ways that they can sell it. So as a self-drive, um, as a, as a multi-centre, um, what do you recommend and how could you advise agents on that? Yeah, so as you say, it's, we're covering sort of vast distances even within New South Wales. So yeah, there's definitely um, a bit of planning that might want to go into it if you're you know, combining different destinations. Um, a great self-drive route, which I recommend for sort of first timers, particularly to New South Wales, which would take you about sort of four to seven days, depending on how long people are spending overnight, is to sort of do a Sydney and Surrounds loop, uh, which is a really nice itinerary that helps you to kind of get some of that diversity within one, um, within one holiday. So from Sydney, you can drive west out to the Blue Mountains, which is around 90 minutes, do the sort of national park and nature and wildlife experiences there. Then if you drive north a bit towards uh, the Hunter Valley, there you've got your amazing food and drink or wine experience. Um, and then you can loop back across to the coast of Port Stephens, where again, you can get great marine life experiences and coastal experiences, along with a bit of Aboriginal heritage as well. They also um, have uh, sand uh, quad biking tours on the sand dunes there, which is Aboriginal land. So they can combine that sort of adventure experience with Aboriginal culture as well before kind of looping a uh, customer down back to Sydney, which is about a two and a half hour drive down from there. So that, that's a nice sort of little um, first time as a loop. Uh, there's obviously other great self-drive touring options. I've kind of touched on them already. You can either drive north towards Byron Bay along the legendary Pacific Coast route. And we'd sort of recommend around sort of five days between Sydney and Byron Bay. That gives you lots of opportunity to stop and spend a night in a few different towns. And also means you won't spend more than sort of three hours driving each day. So obviously then, with that as a guideline, you can determine how much driving people want to do. Um, similarly, the South Coast, you can uh, take the drive towards Melbourne, as I say, along the Grand Pacific Drive. You might want sort of a minimum of sort of three to four days on the South Coast before you then hit the Victorian border. So again, it might be a sort of seven day drive in total between Sydney to Melbourne. Um, but the other great thing about New South Wales is there are a lot of regional airports as well. So if there is, um, you know, customers that don't want to drive or they don't have the time. Um, there's a lot of um, domestic flight options available as well. You could fly from Sydney to Ballina in, you know, an hour and a half or something. And then you're very, very close to Byron Bay. And then you've got all access to the north coast of New South Wales. You can also fly inland towards um, to areas like Orange or Mudgee, which are other wine regions in New South Wales. It's again, only around a sort of hour flight. So there's lots of flying options available. And then finally, I'd just say there, there is the, the trains. So you can get to Blue Mountains by train, you can get to the Hunter Valley by train. So again, if people don't want to hire a car, for instance, to drive there from Sydney, they could actually hop on the train as well. So there's a few different options that make it a little bit more accessible um, to get around. 
Sure, okay. And um, I mean, are camper vans still a popular option in, in New South Wales as well? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And we do see those most often going either north towards Byron Bay or south down towards um, the, the Victoria border. So yeah, absolutely. That's still a popular option. And there's lots of different kind of camping and caravan park options um, up and down the coast. Um, so yeah, we can definitely recommend still uh, doing that as an option, particularly those who want to perhaps post lockdown, have their own space, have their own private space and have their own freedom to kind of explore um, you know, at their own leisure, as and when they want to. Yeah, that does sound very tempting, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so the next question would be when to sell it. Um, so kind of seasonal considerations. And I guess also um, there are a number of key events um, within the state as well that the agents can sell around, right? Yeah, so um, I mean, fortunately for New South Wales, we have quite a temperate climate. So there's not really anything kind of particularly seasonal that you need to take into consideration. Um, we're fortunate that it's pretty much great weather year round. Obviously the winter months, so which are you know at the same time as our summer months, slightly cooler, might be a bit wetter, but they're nothing on the scale of our UK winters. So um, certainly most of us uh, will be quite warm and, and happy there. And particularly the further north you go, the warmer it is. So I've been in Byron Bay in the winter and it's still been 22 degrees um, during the day. So gets a bit cool at night but definitely still nice sort of pleasant temperatures throughout the day so we're lucky that there isn't sort of anything sort of you know um, major to have to consider in terms of seasons um, and as you say there's some amazing events that also take place year round so there's never really a bad time to visit New South Wales um, you've obviously got famous um, events like Sydney New Year's Eve um, but it's sort of you know for the, for the reasons that it's famous it's popular it's busy and so there's lots of other things you can consider as well um, we have Vivid Sydney which is um, the uh, a festival of lights music and ideas which takes place every May and June so it's sort of going into the Australian winter um, but there's a lot of firework displays as part of that event there's um, lots of light installations and artistic events taking place so perhaps a, a nice alternative to New Year's Eve um, there's also in the shoulder seasons as well, um, quite, you know, great events like uh, Hand at Opera takes place uh, from sort of late March to late April each year. And that's actually where they build um, a floating stage out in the harbour and they put on an opera event with um, the audience sitting outdoors with the backdrop of the Sydney Opera House and the Sydney Harbour Bridge. Again, they have fireworks every night. So it's a pretty spectacular outdoor event that people can enjoy if they're sort of visiting, yeah, in that sort of um, our spring uh, going into the Australian autumn. So uh, there's, there's lots of different options. And yeah, as I say, there's sort of never really quite a bad time to go. It's just a case of looking, uh, looking up the events calendar and seeing what's on when, uh, when your customers are going down there. Okay, are there lots of events going on um, in sm smaller towns and, uh, and throughout New South Wales as well, presumably? Yeah, definitely. So there's food and wine festivals that take place. Um, again, Orange, which is uh, the wine region I mentioned earlier, they have a, um, the longest running regional food festival, um, which takes place in sort of April each year. Um, it's just called Orange Food Festival. Uh, there's also um, the, the Hunter Valley they have food festivals. There's um, great sort of music festivals as well that take place like Blues Fest in Byron Bay. Um, so yeah, absolutely. There's um, there's lots of regional um, events that people can can uh, can you know incorporate into an itinerary uh, if they wish to as well. Okay. So lastly, what is new in New South Wales? Um, obviously, there's always new hotel openings, um, but I guess if you could just give us a, a little overview. And um, I suppose, obviously, um, at the beginning of this year, we, we sadly had the, the bushfires as well. So I guess some agents might want to be updated on, on, on how, how or if that's, that's changed anything. Yeah, well, we were fortunate that we didn't sort of, you know, lose products and things like that as a result of the bushfires. So um, obviously it was a very challenging time for the state, but um, luckily we've seen a lot of recovery since that point. Um, we've obviously had a second issue to contend with, um, with COVID-19, um, which hasn't obviously helped a lot of, um, you know, particularly those regional areas that were affected by bushfires. But um, we're lucky that at least domestically within New South Wales now travel restrictions are, have already been lifted so we are starting to see some of that tourism recovery um, at least on a domestic front already which will obviously help to ready a lot of our products um, for when international travel can resume again as well so that's been um, you know really positive over the last month or so 
Um, but in terms of what's new, yeah, it hasn't really stopped us being able to um, have new products become available. So um, the Wildlife Retreat opened up at Taronga Zoo um, late last year, um, which is a fantastic new uh, accommodation option right within Sydney. It's a, a beautiful new sort of hotel style accommodation um, set within the Australian animal enclosure in Taronga Zoo. So you can be hanging out in your room and there'll be a koala hanging out in the tree outside your window. So that's pretty cool. Um, we've also got on the subject of wildlife, um, a new koala sanctuary um, opening up in Port Stephens. Um, so that will be another great sort of wildlife offering that people can add to um, an itinerary there. Uh, it was slated to open in April. It's been a bit delayed, obviously, due to um, the current restrictions. Um, but we expect that that will open in the next um, you know, couple of months or so. So that's another option that will soon be available to agents. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's a, always a lot of kind of new, new things coming on. I think I, I touched on the new um, tasting room at Brokenwood Wines in the Hunter Valley uh, that opened recently. Um, and yeah, so I think some things might have been slightly delayed from, you know, the initial openings that they were, they were hoping to go for. But um, I think we'll start to see more and more coming back um, as the sort of travel restrictions are lifted going forward. Yeah, it definitely has been a challenging year, hasn't it, for New South Wales? But it's good to know that. So everything's opening up to domestic tourists at the moment. Yeah, so we're fortunate that, yeah, people within living within New South Wales can travel within New South Wales. So, um, you know, they're starting to explore their own backyard, which is uh, which is good. So hopefully they're finding something new and different to do. Um, but yeah, even areas like the Blue Mountains, I know that there was a lot of um, press coverage around that region, you know, particularly during the bushfires. But it's all open and um, I've seen lots of people taking videos of um, walking and hiking through that region. And it's all starting to look, you know, really lush and green again. So um, there's a lot of um, a lot of experiences that people can have within yeah within New South Wales on their doorstep and hopefully we can encourage a lot of um, New South Wales residents to help keep the place warm for us and uh, get it ready for international tourists. Oh, that's good news yeah it's amazing how how nature recovers isn't it. Yeah. So what about you so when when do you think or um, when do you expect to be next traveling to, to New South Wales then? Well, it's a bit of a tough one to call. I guess we're um, we're at the mercy of uh, waiting to find out when borders reopen, as everybody else is. Um, as I say, it's been positive to see those travel restrictions at least lifted domestically in New South Wales. Um, and I know that Tourism Australia have actually put together a travel status map, which is available on their website, um, australia.com. So that actually, if agents want to sort of check the current status of, um, of what's happening within each state in Australia, that's quite a good resource and it will be updated sort of um, going forward. Um, so it's a bit hard to call. I had a trip unfortunately cancelled in May. I was due to go to, to Sydney then. So I really hope that I can, um, you know, re replan and rebook that trip um, as soon as possible. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, a hard, it's a hard one to call as to exactly when that will be. But um, yeah, I know certainly a lot of people in New South Wales are, are missing their international friends. So hopefully, um, you know, it won't be too long before we can welcome everyone back again. Yeah. Where would you, if, um, where would you go if, if you could choose anywhere to go in New South Wales right now then? Oh, I suppose I probably, like most people, would want to kind of escape to the country, if you like. Um, so it probably would be going out to one of the regions. Um, I did actually uh, last year do a trip to Orange and then drove back through towards the Blue Mountains. And that was really spectacular, actually seeing the Blue Mountains from the other side. A lot of people approach the mountains from Sydney. Um, but if you approach from the other side, you get these much more kind of dramatic views of the escarpments as you're driving along. So that was a really um, great trip. And um, a, a place that I missed out when I went that way was, um, was Mudgee, which is a, another great wine uh, growing region in New South Wales. So I think I'd probably try and get to um, the little town of Mudgee uh, do some wine tasting and just relax in the vineyards I think that'd be quite a nice option <laughs> that does sound very nice okay well um just how can I mean obviously we've got the webinars going on which is which is really exciting how else can agents get hold of of more tools and information if, if they need to um to deal with inquiries into New South Wales yeah, so we have a, a trade Facebook page. So that's probably the easiest and best way to sort of keep up to date with us. And um, so that's just facebook.com forward slash destination NSW trade. Um, we'll also have links on there as to how to register for the webinars, but I believe the, um, the links to register are actually also on the Selling Travel website as well. So people can find the links to register there. 
Um, we also have a module on the Aussie Specialist Programme, which is Tourism Australia's um, learning um, platform. So for anyone who wants to um, you know, improve their destination knowledge or learn a bit more, um, the Aussie Specialist Programme, which is just aussiespecialist.com, uh, is a great resource. It's also got maps and sort of itinerary planning tools available there. Um, you can also use our consumer websites as well, um, sydney.com or visit nsw.com. Again, we've got lots of kind of maps and information about, um, about the destination. Um, but absolutely anyone can um, contact us via Facebook if they've got specific questions um, that they want to ask us and we're always happy, happy to help. Great, yeah. Okay. And, and yes, agents can head to uh, sellingtravel.co.uk slash webinars to, um, to link directly to, to sign up to those um, webinars. And you can win quite a few prizes as well there, can't you? Yeah, so we're giving away some weekly prizes. So for anyone who tunes in each week, um, we've got a few different prizes on offer. Next week, we're giving away um, some Sydney beach towels. So hopefully when we can all hit the beach again, there'll be a, a great um, thing to have on hand. Uh, we've also, if everyone or if anyone sort of watches all four of the webinars and you can watch them back if you've missed the first one um, and enter the weekly competitions, um, you'll go into a grand prize draw to win um, a pair of bows um, over your headphones. So uh, hopefully there'll also be another travelling essential and we can all get back onto it again. Definitely. OK, well, thank you very much, for um, Siobhan, um, for giving up your time and telling us all about New South Wales. And um, yeah, hopefully we'll see you in, in person soon. And um, Hopefully everyone will get to visit New South Wales and see for themselves. <laughs> Fingers Thank crossed. You. Yeah, we thank everyone for their support so far. It's been great to um, still be um, chatting and keeping in touch with everyone. So yeah, do, do stay in touch and I hope everyone takes care in the meantime. Great. Thanks, Siobhan. Thanks.